Folks, welcome to our analysis of DWAC, Digital World Acquisition Corp. This is the SPAC that Donald Trump is now partnered up with for a merger. And they will soon be rolling out Truth Social. You'll see here, I have already registered. Don't hesitate. Register now. Tell a friend. Get everybody on board with this platform because I am totally psyched for what's coming down the pike. In fact, so much so on Thursday night, I mentioned to viewers on our live stream on YouTube that uh, we were in. I bought the shares of DWAC on Thursday. I said on Thursday night, I thought it was going to higher. And in fact, here's exactly what I had to say about DWAC. And here is um, Trump's SPAC. DWAC is the symbol. They're going to be going head to head Facebook. They're going to have a payment platform. Awesome. Do you know how many conservative people out there that have been deplatformed because they spoke their mind? Uh, I'm going to be leaving my uh, uh, email provider, MailChimp. Goodbye, MailChimp. I'm leaving you because they deplatform uh, people that have a view different than these moronic idiots on the left wing. I hope he starts up a, an email platform, but I, I found a new one, uh, one more friendly. I don't have to worry about getting shut down. Uh, Stripe has shut down people. Uh, PayPal has definitely done that. I use both. And if they continue to behave this way, I, I will be switching over to Trump's new platform as soon as it's available. Uh, he's also going to be going head to head with the major news outlets. This is going to be awesome. So I was looking at the chart today, and this is a monthly chart, DWAC, the symbol, and it was up around 18 bucks. Hey, Paul. Top of the evening to you. It was around 18 bucks, and uh, here's today's price action. I said, let me get a drink of water and let me think about this because it was so overbought. And by the time I got back, it did pull back. But then all of a sudden, it was up in the mid-20s. I said, screw it. I'll leg in. I want a piece of this because I think it's going to par. I think it's going to $100 per share in a heartbeat because people aren't going to know how to value this thing yet. But they do know what the valuation is of Facebook. So they will ballpark it. This is a 15-minute chart uh, trading very, very nicely into the close, consolidating. But after the close, it traded as high as 59.80 per share. So we closed at 45.50, almost 60 bucks a share. So I think we're going to $100 per share. Could be as soon as tomorrow. We will be looking to buy more. I will be sending out an alert to members. but. We will be legging in. We will not be buying all one shot. There will be pullbacks. Have no doubt about it. And if you just think about it, 80 million people voted for him. Of those people that didn't vote for him, that voted for the potato, they're pissed now. Now he's probably got easily 100 million people that want to hear from him. They don't want to hear from CNN. They don't want to hear from MSNBC. They don't even want to hear from Fox anymore. So they will be going over to his platforms. It's just a matter of how many. Now, as I mentioned on the clip, I thought we were going to $100 per share at a bare minimum. In fact, we hit $175 per share. We did book profits on the trade. And you could see that we entered on the 21st of October. We exited on the 22nd. We entered at a price of 28.93. Exited at 157 spot 50. I'm going to go over the reason of as to why we exited this trade. And the reason why, while longer term, I am very bullish on this stock. I would not recommend anyone right here, right now, go dipping their toe back in the water immediately. Does that mean it can't go higher on Monday morning? Of course it can. It probably will. But is it a wise move to make? I don't think that it is. So we'll talk about that more in a moment. Let's get to some analysis of, of A, what a, what a SPAC is. Let's talk about that. Then we're going to talk about who started Digital World Acquisition. We'll talk a little bit about the mission statement of Truth Social. And we'll talk about some cons and some pros. Normally I do pros first. I'm going to go over the cons first. And then what we're going to do is we're going to talk about the charts, the technical analysis of not just DWAC, but also 
GME, and you may be saying, why? Why? Why do you want to talk about GME here? The reason is, is I have a feeling that this stock is going to trade a lot like GME. And what I want to drive home is that GME, while it's been a, a steadfast, uh, rocket-fueled stock of, of, of the past year, uh, it's had its, its, its troughs as well as its peaks. So we don't want to get emotional about any stock. So before we begin, the charting software that we're going to be using is TrendSpider. TrendSpider is the retail investor's tool to combat all of the tier one trading software that the institutional traders trade against you with. This levels the playing field. Automated technical analysis. So please... Automate your grunt work, speed up your technical analysis, and all the while improving your accuracy. There's, because there's no sense in speeding up your analysis if you're not going to improve your accuracy at the same time. Reduce costly analytical mistakes. Find winning chart setups with their scanners. You can explore their product. They have a demo tour, seven-day free trial offer. Or if you've been thinking about becoming a member to the Contrarian Trader, and you like TrendSpider, you think it's for you, it's going to help you improve your game, well then, take advantage of our silver and gold level memberships because I give it away free. It's included with our silver and gold level memberships. So take advantage of it now. Let's talk about, first off, what a SPAC is. Think of a SPAC as being a, a tool, a, uh, a fast track, if you will, to the IPO market. If Donald Trump would have wanted to take Truth Social public, he would have had to go through years of due diligence and whatnot. Through the special pur purpose acquisition company, what he's able to do is simply get bought out. He's a private entity. Now, he's no longer going to be a private entity. Uh, he will be a public entity. And I'm sure the symbol is going to change soon. So let's talk a little bit about what a SPAC is. A special purpose acquisition company is formed to raise money through an IPO, initial public offering, to buy another company. At the time of the IPOs, SPACs have no existing business operations or even stated targets for acquisition. Perfect case in point. You can't really find a business model, a purpose for existence for DWAC prior to the announcement with Donald Trump. Investors in SPACs can range from well-known private equity funds and celebrities to the general public. SPACs have two years to complete an acquisition or they must return their funds to investors. DWAC only went public in September of this year. So you can see that there was, um, there was an intent uh, to probably make this deal happen at the time it IPO'd. I couldn't imagine it not being the case. Now, the founder of DWAC is a gentleman named Patrick Orlando. He's out of Miami, and he's a part of Benesir Investment Group. And you can see here, he's chairman and CEO for DWAC for the past six months. Now, what's key to remember here is that DWAC has no financials. There's nothing. And there won't be anything after the merger with... Donald Trump is complete. So we need to keep in mind that there is no cash flow for this company. It will be funded through the capital raise of DWAC when they went public a while ago, subject to redemptions. And I want to talk a little bit about that. So here's where things get a little bit wonky for you as the investor. We need to be open and honest with ourselves because these, these cons can be the opportunity of the future. And I want to explain what I mean by that in a moment. Rather than being the guy that just continually used to buy ad nauseum with no reason of as to why he's buying and then becoming a victim of the selling that ensues, don't let that be you. Could you imagine being the person that bought at $175 per share? How would you have felt only minutes later? You need to wait for your setup. Your setup is going to come. Now, here are the cons that we're going to be worried about. While it's great to see that they're going to have an enterprise value of $875 million, funded initially by $293 million from Orlando, you got to assume there are no redemptions. So maybe the people that are invested in this 
SPAC are aware of the fact that they were going to be investing along with President Trump. Uh, those who were not aware of that, they may decide to pull. So l just be aware that there may be some redemptions of the shares. Not that it's going to hold back the IPO at all or the business moving forward. I'm sure they're going to get more capital raises in the future, but that becomes the problem because A, you're going to have the news media and you're going to have the politicians looking to rip the throat out of this deal. If they see one redemption, it's going to be headline news. It's going to be all about how investors are pulling because they hate Donald Trump. That may cause some pressure on the shares. You don't know where this news is going to come from or when. Secondly, it's going to be a foregone conclusion that there will be new shares issued. Generally, when that happens, it's a negative for the stock. My guess is, is that they're going to take advantage of this initial run-up in the stock to dilute the shares. That's going to cause a pullback. On that pullback, that's an opportunity. So while it's a negative for long-term investors that they're diluting the shares, if you're a trader like I am, I'm viewing that as an opportunity to buy that dip and then watch it rip back up higher. Probably going to be a V-shaped rally back. So just some concerns to be wary of here. You have politicians, whether it be the Republicans or the Democrats, looking to take the legs out from underneath this platform. Guaranteed. The Republicans view him as a threat to their dominance. And the Democrats, they don't want him having a voice. The last thing that they want is Donald Trump having a voice. Now, the problem is for the Republicans and the Democrats is that Donald Trump got 73.6 million votes. It's uncontested. And when you take a look at President Biden's approval ratings, this is as of September the 22nd, his approval ratings are tanking. Uh, you have more people that disapprove of the work that he's done. Think about it. It's not, it hasn't been a year yet that he's been in office. You have more people that disapprove of the work that he's done. So we know that Donald Trump had 73.6 million geeked up fans willing to come out and vote for him. Think about how many have buyer's remorse that voted for Biden. And how much more in terms of eyeballs you're going to get now, probably upwards of 100 million people looking for a new platform for which to get news because you ain't going to get it from CNN. You're not going to get it from MSNBC. Right here, right now, we are at the second lowest point in history of mistrust of the media. People are begging for, dare I say, the truth. I'm psyched for this, totally psyched for this. So now that we're on more of the cons of what's going to keep the stock moving up higher, and there will be peaks and valleys, peaks and valleys. It's, it's going to happen. I'm going to show you that with GameStop in a moment. Wall Street bets, folks. I mean, I'm going to refresh this. I mean, DWAC has been on fire with here. One thread, two threads. I mean, they're just all over. Three threads. I mean, I've only been on here for a couple of seconds. Uh, the enthusiasm on the part of Wall Street bets is going to be insane. So that's the reason why the last thing I want to do right here, right now, is come on and give you my cons and say the stock's going to pull back. I have no clue. Nobody has any clue. But what I want you to, to keep an eye on is the reason why we got out. And let's talk about that trade for a moment. Now, we got into DWAC on Thursday the 21st. And what we were looking at this is a 15-minute chart. What we were looking at was a halting of the shares throughout the day on Thursday. And then, as I took a glimpse at the 15-minute chart, we began to see a breakout above resistance. They had resumed trading. I said, you know what? This thing went from the mid-teens to the mid-20s in a heartbeat. So rather than buying a big position, I said, you know what? Let's leg in here. Uh, we'll, we'll put on a third of our intended position and we'll go from there. Sure enough, 
in a heartbeat, we got executed on our order at, what was it, $28.93 per share. Uh, we began to break out. Before I knew it, we were in the 40s. And I mentioned on Thursday Night Stock Charts Live on YouTube and Twitter that we were seeing a nice consolidation in the mid-40s. And I figured easily we were going to go to $100 per share, quite possibly on Friday, as I mentioned earlier in that clip. Sure enough, we opened up on Friday at 118.80. And they halted the shares yet again. And I said, you know what? I'm going to put an advanced order out on the shares. And we got taken out of the position at $157.50. That was a 444% gain within 24 hours. Now, I toyed with entering or re-entering the trade on Friday afternoon, but I decided no, and here's why. It's for the same exact reason of, as to why I got out, because not much had changed. Now we're going to go to a four-hour chart, and I'm going to bring up the RSI, which is the Relative Strength Indicator. Now, when you take a look at the RSI on DWAC, you can see that when we exited the trade RSI flatlined. It literally couldn't go any higher. It, it had just stopped. Therefore, we needed to exit the trade. You need to make your profits real. We hit a high of like 99.88. You can see that some of the froth on RSI has come off, but we're still at a very elevated level at 86 on RSI on a four-hour time frame. It's not insignificant. Now, does that mean we can't pop up higher? I think we can pop up higher, and we probably will. But as you become overbought yet again, those buyers are going to get hammered with profit takers. So the price action on a four-hour time frame, not looking bad. We are in a triangle formation. We held the lower band of support. So I'm not going to be the least bit surprised to see a pop-up higher on Monday morning. Will I chase it? No. We're going to be looking for a pullback and we'll look to re-enter when the risk versus reward is in our favor. Because, you know, it looks very, very tempting to go chasing these shares right here, right now, because of those that may have missed GameStop. Now, GameStop, which is the pimp Mac daddy of uh, Wall Street bets, I mean, it's seen RSI hit very high levels in the past, and we have seen corrections in, and serious corrections, in GameStop. So to think that DWAC is immune from a correction is foolhardy. You, you don't want to fall into that trap. So wait for your time to come. This is the type of stock that you buy the dips. When there's blood in the street, you buy the dip. Have little doubt. Here's another time here, back in August. We broke out trading above the third standard deviation Bollinger Band, very extended. I'll save you the technical jargon. In short, you're not supposed to be there. What do we do? Consolidate it sideways, then rolled over a bit. And that's okay. That's what it's supposed to do. So just because this is a hot stock, a hot SPAC, uh, it is probably going to be the future of media. There will be opportunities to get in at a better risk-reward entry point. And this is not a stock. I don't think you could even margin on this, the, this stock. This is not one that you want to get leveraged up on, folks. And there are no options to hedge your bets with. So just be careful. Buy in increments. And even with the case of GameStop right now, GameStop is breaking down. So... GameStop in and of itself is not immune from corrections and therefore DWAC will not be immune either. But that being said, I am extremely bullish on the future for DWAC. We will be back involved with DWAC when the risk reward is in our favor. We will not go chasing because that's what the pumpers want you to do. They want to bait you in and then sell into your buying. Don't let that be you. And with that, folks, join us tonight, Sunday Night Futures Live, 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, here on YouTube and on Twitter. Like, subscribe. Don't forget Trend Spider, 35% discount code, 35CON, the discount code. If you watch this on YouTube, use the link below. If you watch this on Twitter, use the link tree above to get taken over to Trend Spider to, to subscribe through them. Or if you want it free with my services, Head on over to The Contrarian Trader. You get a free 14-day free trial offer. Everybody have a great night. Be well.